Podcast episode for 10K hours. Yeah, man. I got Alex Nice here with me. So, uh, yeah, man. How's it been going? What it's you been working good. on lately? Uh, I'm working on a project with Lucasfilm right now. and uh, Oh, we can't talk about it, though. We cannot talk about it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm keeping busy. I've been busy. I've been lucky to be busy for about two years straight now. So it just kind of feels like one long slag of work. Which is constant been, work. Yeah. Hey, man. Been, that's good. That's good. good. That's really good to have. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's exhausting, but it's good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we uh, we worked together on on Black Adam, right? We did. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah, that was that was a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about. So you're you know you're a concept uh, artist in the industry. Sure. Yes. Right. Where did you you know where did you start? What what, what made you want to get into mm. this industry? Like what, what like what was the journey? Uh, I tell people that I took the weird roundabout way mm. to get where I am, and yeah. it's pretty. It's kind of kind of weird. So uh, I grew up in the Bay Area, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, I got my first um, introduction into 3D was 3D Studio. Before 3D Studio Max, it was the program 3D. And it was the very first one in the 90s or, or yeah, or I guess mid 90s. Yeah. And it was because my parents worked at Autodesk uh, when they first oh, started, nice. inve- when they first invented uh, 3D Studio Max. So I was a kid learning 3D maybe in junior high at a really young age and then kind of dropped off the map from 3D and then went and did my crazy stuff during my high school years and then in junior college came back into 3D, 3D stuff and then kind of went from there. So that was kind of kind of a cool thing to like um, start with doing 3D to get my, you know, get my chops in that and then slowly learn how uh, all that stuff kind of worked. Yep, don't yeah. hit the wood anyway. <laughs> and then um, everybody always hits the table; it's no big deal. Uh, um, so and so in junior, but cool. in junior college, I was doing 3D stuff, and then I got a job uh, from the teacher at that school to do courtroom simulations. So I spent about five years court courtroom simulations, so modeling airplane accidents, train accidents, and animating them for big trials like multi. Wow, you you weren't kidding. You 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 started out all over the place. Eh? Yeah. So and now wow. I mean it was really crazy because you would go to like San Francisco and. Say if there was like a car accident, we would have the police close an intersection or whatever, and then we would kind of measure the accident intersection and then rebuild it in 3D and then show that to the then do an animation and show that to the jury so they understood how uh, the accident took place. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of fascinating. It, it was really exciting because I mean a good example is like if you're driving down the road and if the bush was blocking the line of sight of a pedestrian, for instance, and the car hit somebody, unfortunately. Uh, in 3D, you can see that line of sight. So you can actually figure out the oh. mechanics of what causes an accident or whatever. Oh, okay. So that was, I mean, it, for me, a kid in junior, I mean, junior college, and then going into that was super cool. And then um, and then I was slowly able to start getting jobs down in Los Angeles, and I would come down here and do car commercials for a company called Sway. And so I was a CG generalist, was my first basically entertainment job that I got down here. Mm-hmm. It's always interesting to talk to the artists that, you know, um, I mean, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, I, I did a little bit of 2D stuff mm-hmm. early on, you know, but uh, when it when I jumped into 3D, like that, everything clicked for me. Like that's that's, you know, and, totally. and becoming like a hybrid work form. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting a chance to like talk to some of the other artists that have started out, you know, in 3D first and are now in what is, you know, mostly predominantly a 2D industry mm-hmm. which is concept art right mm-hmm. nothing really has to move or anything like that you just got to show it right and mm-hmm. that's the idea yeah but where what the bonuses of doing that is is it gives you all the tools to replicate multiple images very quickly from very different angles you know you can get you know almost cad files out of some of the, some of the modeling that you've done you yeah. know uh for set design and and how important that is totally um so it's 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 interesting to see you know how quickly, and I would say in a, in a short time, what would you say like ten years? It's 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 taking being over. a concept artist is definitely a hybrid workflow. Hundred percent, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the the thing that I've always told people is that you know I started in three D and then I was working in three D at a young age, but in art school I studied fine art and illustration. Foundation so, is key. Yeah, yeah, so getting those foundations is what actually 
got me to where I needed to be at this point, basically, because you're getting you're combining those skills nowadays in a really in, like interesting way, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it and everybody starts in different areas. You you definitely took the the roundabout way. That's that's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty crazy. I mean, those first jobs coming down to L.A., you know, the pay was so low, and I had <laughs> to pay my own way down here to like yeah. fly and then get a hotel and rent a car. I'm leaving these jobs without making any money. I was just doing them for the experience. So yeah, I, I was really paying my dues for maybe the first few years that I was down here. Yeah, I, I actually, like, recently I shared, like, something on my social media where it was, like, this guy building, you know, I think it was, like, boom boxes or something like that. Like, sub, remember, like, the old sub boxes mm-hmm. you put in the, in the back of your car? Mm-hmm. And he was, you know, he was building that, and he, he had a voice where he was, ta- like, he was talking over the video where he's like, if you want to do something, like, find someone that's, that's good at it mm-hmm. and work underneath them for three months. Yeah. And at the end of the three months, you know, like ask for the job, you know, like that yeah. kind of a mentality. Yep. And we there that doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah. You know, um, it's definitely, but it's it's making a comeback, I think. What? Where men- mentorship is, is, you know, something that you can do via the internet and mm-hmm. Zoom and all these things. You could reach out to your favorite artists, you know what I mean? Like Oh, and learn off of them, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, you know. Yeah. Uh and with things like, you know, like art station master classes, Noman master classes, or you, you know, even a Gumroad or, you know, tutorials and stuff like that. What's what's something that you feel, you know, and this this might get a little, you know, you know, um what's the word I'm looking for? Um debatable, I guess is is the is the question. Um you know, do you feel that 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 there's that students today that want to get into this field, are they missing something by just learning from tutorials, or are they, I mean, you know, a, is there is there stuff that you're seeing in in the younger artists that they need to work on? Yeah, I mean, I've taught at Noman, and I've I've, mm-hmm. I've been kind of following this industry for a lot of years, and I would say that it's, I mean, everything's foundation. It's yeah. all you have to learn those foundations, and those are what really kind of get I think those are the things that make it a career and not a hobby is learning how to create those foundations and build off of that you know right. and when I yes you need to specialize but also you need to understand what makes a good image in all those formats I mean sculpting um, 3d modeling I say a generalist is really where it's at nowadays versus just understanding how to do a few things here and there because you're applying your foundations to all of those skills across the board so it's yeah yeah, I, think it's super I mean, it, for for me, it's like I I see I see a lot of you know really amazing tutorials by so many amazing artists that you know they come out and they're super affordable, mm-hmm. um, and it's just like man, I wish I had that when I was getting into this. Yeah, we didn't but have that. We didn't up. have that at all, <laughs> you know. And there was just no, there was just no no form of education that was a uh, readily available like it is now. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was younger. On my Christmas list was Noman DVDs to be shipped up yeah. to us in the yeah, Bay Area, yeah. so I could watch those Ryan Church like DVDs exactly. and learn how to do this stuff. And it the was, coveted Ryan Church. I'm so and, I'm and so McKay jealous DVDs, that the kids yeah. have everything nowadays to be able to just like, you know, pick it up and do a tutorial real fast. And they're, I mean, a lot of them are free on in YouTube. You can oh learn, yeah, you can yeah. learn everything. There's that, that you too. Want now. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, the problem I'm seeing is that I'm I'm seeing people do the tutorial. And then throwing that in their in their portfolio, Absolutely. and it's like, no, do do it a couple times so you completely understand what the tutorial is saying mm-hmm. and doing, mm-hmm. and then make something of your own and do that yeah. right. Like, if that's the you know best word of advice, you know, there's so many, so many Dominic Quick, you know, uh, tu- you know tutorials that he's put out there that you know if you literally type in his name on ArtStation, there's so many clones. Yeah. Right, and it's like no, and it's you like spot take it from that a mile away because they're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's even it's like it's rendered exactly. Yeah, I th- I mean I I I was d- I was an art director for a company uh, down here in downtown LA, and uh, we did a lot of interviews and hiring. And when you're looking at those portfolios, it was really important to see someone's own voice and their style and right. their artwork, and not see the tutorials. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many. Um, clones of things that I saw in, in there like you said like it's really it's really a problem it's difficult for the interviewer to actually identify what is not tutorial and what is when you're looking at a lot of this stuff because would, you, would you say that it's almost like there's a lot of things that I'm seeing now we're in a portfolio mm-hmm. for an artist 
is that it's like final image, final image, final image, and not a lot of people are showing how they got there. Mm -hmm. So like I think process. that we're going to see a resurgence of that. You yeah, know, sketches. And, uh, yeah. I mean, people are looking. I mean, they want to see a lot in a concept artist now. Like when we were younger, it was it was much less. Now they want to see you tell a story. They want to see the emotion. Yeah. They want to see that you have a sense of design. I personally look for a sense of design in artists more than I look for a pretty environment painting or a character painting. I'm looking for the design choices that make a good silhouette and all of those things that you are looking for and not just like, um, just the, the ability to replicate something. Like there's always, because what's interesting, it's it kind of feels like there's a, what's popular at the moment that you see and like it happens, definitely yeah. the I see a lot of the boards that are flooded with kind of like blender foggy scenes that are kind of taking place because Eevee is so amazing right so there's, right it's really it's it's a challenge in the concept industry because you have to come up with something really original so you have to show a lot of original stuff in order to get that job I think yeah mm -hmm. it's definitely and you know also by the way we're not knocking Dominic Quick he's a good friend of mine and also and like all these statues yeah. are over here, but Amazing. anyways, uh, yeah, no, Dom, Dom is Dom's the man, but uh, yeah, you know, it's it, it's just you know it's interesting to see where that's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what made you want to get into doing you know artwork for movies? Like, was there a passion there? Were you inspired by like the old practical stuff? Like, yeah. So I know? mean, it, like I said, uh, to continue the roundabout path, it was like so I was doing car commercials, car commercials as a generalist here in LA. Mm -hmm. And then I moved, my first film that I made it to was as a generalist on Roland Emmerich's 2012 film. Oh, nice. So there I was doing a lot of uh, environment modeling and building and layout kind of stuff for the a lot of the destruction buildings. Like I built the Bellagio from the Vegas sequence when the Bellagio crumbled down and stuff. Oh, cool. So I, as a modeler, I was kind of doing that stuff. And um, as I'm sitting there at the desk and you can kind of see people walking into the office that are like, more artsy, I would say, right? And they walk past the <laughs> corral of 3D artists that are just kind of slaving away, creating assets. Were, were they like... Yeah, they were like, all right, we're going <laughs> into the real room. And it, those were the matte painters. Ah. And, I, I, and when I was also in art school, I took a few matte painting classes, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. And uh, credit to the guys that were running the studio at Uncharted, they let me re-interview while I was there and for a matte painting position, a junior matte painting position. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I came in as a generalist, and then on that film because it was a maybe a year and a half long project I'd gotten into the matte painting department and I was able to sit with some of the original glass matte painters that would do the you know those beautiful paintings from the old days before there were computers they'd paint on glass if you don't know yeah and they would paint like these landscapes and then film you know with transparent glass and film on top of that but and that's, uh, and that's how they would get the parallaxing to happen right like right? a good example would be like imagine a piece of glass in front of the camera um, and they would paint a castle on the glass and it would appear because the glass is transparent the gl the castle would appear on the hillside off in the background right. versus in the foreground right so I, I was there and I learned how to matte paint and 3d matte paint on 2012 and that's when I started a 10-year career of, as just a matte painter and in that process I realized that I wanted to be more on the creative side than more on the actual shot side post-production and so I slowly was pushing my way to doing more concept work and that's where I am now, basically, which I enjoy yeah. the most. But yeah. yeah, that painting's always in my heart, though. I love it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. man! Like, those were some of my f most favorite DVDs from Noman were the Dylan Cole stuff. Yeah, insane! Like you, they see opened them your painting. eyes. Yeah, like when he was doing like you know like I mean, yeah he's going out there and traveling the world and taking photos like mm -hmm. oh yeah who doesn't want that job yeah but he's also getting clever where it's like. You know, he's in his kitchen and he's got like some mushrooms and, you know, he's making a little photo scene. And it's a world suddenly. And, you, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh yeah. this is awesome. You yeah. know, like he was blending the practical with the digital, which is always the best way, in my opinion. It, I mean, map painting is so crazy because you have to imagine in visual effects studio, there's, you know, the team of artists doing these huge environments. This is how it was when I was at Uncharted. These huge environments, teams of artists modeling, texturing, animating, doing all this stuff. And then a small team of map painters creating entire sequences with just a few artists that are painting and using 2.5D techniques to do everything. Yeah. Like a lot of, like, for example, the pod race scene in uh, the Attack of the Clones, was it? Or Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace, yeah. The pod race scene when they were going in there was all like 2.5D map painting for those environments. So they go in there and put photos on geometry and paint on top of that. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, 
it was this crazy like po like position that existed almost outside of the pipeline and you could create these huge scenes and see your paintings up there on the screen which was just amazing oh wow yeah yeah the, the good old glory days so yeah. like if you had to so w at what age so how old were you when you were doing the matte painting and then transitioned into concept art started matte painting when i was 28 years old 28 yeah yeah uh did about five or six years as the courtroom simulation artist before that in high yeah. school like tattoo artist and stuff like that oh you did tattoos yeah, yeah. Wow, I messed up a lot of you've been up. all over the map buddy <laughs> yeah. like uh, so like 2d study fine art then went into courtroom animation then did generalist work then matte painting for 10 years and then concept illustration from there yeah oh wow yeah that's, kind, of that's amazing. kind of a weird thing because it's uh, what's really strange is that what helps me now is the generalist work that i've been trained on is now like applicable in the concept art realm 100 percent. so now i'm sitting here using all these techniques that i've been using for years in the concept side which is which has been really helpful for me yeah. i mean like for for me i've mostly just been using zbrush like zbrush and key shot and then painting on top of which is a right? game changing which, which is yeah also. all game changing yeah. right mm -hmm. but it, it's it's interesting to see where you know especially with with blender mm -hmm. and the community just taking it and just just running with it right making all these add-ons and these super powerful things that speed up just making illustrative work you know yeah um that part it has made me go back and want to relearn how to essentially what i'm saying is i'm a bad 3d modeler mm -hmm. i'm a i'm a decent sculptor mm -hmm. right i can get what i need to do to to make an image mm -hmm. but it's there's faster better ways to do it and yeah. if i go back and i learn the foundations mm -hmm. of 3d modeling it's going to make me a better artist just just like learning the foundations would make you a better artist period right Right, so I'm in that process now where I'm going back and I'm learning how to, you know, m you know, model a donut. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? And <laughs> right. like figure out a different operating. Which software. is painful. It's painful, it's painful because yeah. you're just like, mm, I'm faster at this other thing. You know, but I would, I would say specifically right now, there's yeah. a really weird thing that's happening that feels like concept illustration is becoming visual effects. Right. It absolutely is. And it's this really strange thing because. On a, at a certain level, the thing that was difficult about visual effects is that you wanted to be able to smash out concepts really fast, but right. things are like blending in a really weird way. To it's that's why it's called Blender, probably. But yeah. <laughs> it's blending over <laughs> in a really weird way. That's like uh, that's that's I'm not sure where it's going. Is it all going to smash into one visual effects thing, or is it? I, I'm not really sure where. Well, it's I going. you know I'm really really excited. Like I I I want to know so much more about Unreal mm -hmm. with the new Unreal. Not having a poly count limit, straight from ZBrush into Unreal Five. Yeah, and then what you can do with that? Like, yeah. oh, are we just going to be designing keyframes in Unreal now? Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. what is that world going to look like? And and we don't have to worry about any kind of like UVs or like uh, like uh, my brain hurts. walls are crashing. Yeah, like, like I don't I don't blending. understand yeah. like the you know <laughs> dogs and cats living together, <laughs> right? <laughs> mass hysteria. No, uh, <laughs> so you know it. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely a very strange time, mm -hmm. and you know you're always going to have the people that are, you know, almost religious to a specific software or or whatever. And you know it, it you know, like how do how do you feel about that? Like when you see, there's there's a lot of you know I I see a lot of that on the f the forums and in 10k hours mm -hmm. the group you know there's a, you got your your blender buddies and and then you got people that are hardcore maya and all this stuff and it's just like what what are your what are your thoughts on that i think that while everyone's learning these different softwares and especially from someone like you or me who's been in this career for a really long time you can see that um, you got to keep your eye on the prize and what you want to be doing so right. there's so the software is always going to be changing there's always, always going to be these new uh, things that the software can do. Unreal is really popular right now, but at some point you have to keep your your skill set focused on: Am I going to be designing for film? Am I going to be creating environment? Like, there's just because the software can create a really nice mountain does not mean that you'll be able to design a really good spaceship. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be able to um, you have to keep your eye on the on what is the most useful thing for your career versus just the software. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's uh, I I worry that the, that it's a really strange time too. I, I'm sure you're you know you saw illustration go from 
the golden age of illustration, or I did, into clip art in the early 90s yeah, or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, so kind of, yeah. this is the, kind of the same thing, except that clip art now is the kit bash, the world of kit bash. Now you can yeah. get anything that you want as a model element, and you can slap those things together and have a mech within a day. So the real question is, how are, you, how are your design skills going to apply to this kind of kit bash culture that we've also kind of Well, created? I think I, th I think it makes the foundations even more important. Exactly. Right? Because yeah. if, if you don't have a good design sense, mm -hmm. but you know the process of kit bashing, you're still going to make a really ornate looking piece of crap. Right. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. you're going to be like, oh, there's too many things there. And, and you know, everybody goes through that phase, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Even when I was doing ZBrush, it never fails, you know, and, you know, it gets a little technical here, but, like, the moment you figure out alphas, mm -hmm. you cover the entire thing <laughs> right, with alphas, yeah. and you're like, whoa, mm -hmm. whoa, easy. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, yeah, so just because just because those those tools are available doesn't mean you should jump into them right away. Yeah. Take the time to learn and 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 then design right. You Agreed. Know? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's such a crazy time. You can do whatever you want now. Now it's a really matter of about focusing and doing the like using your foundations to create something. I guess. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, like, uh, so you're 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 in the concept industry. You've been working in doing matte paintings and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, give us a give us a list of, of some of the movies that you've worked on, and or, or you know, or maybe just some of your, your favorite ones. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, I'll look up here because yeah, I, mean, I always they're, forget. They're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's see. I've I've been on <laughs> uh, Pacific Rim, Elysium. I did a lot of great work for Sin City. Hugo was a great one. Tron Legacy. Um, oh man, these are all these are all really great movies. One of my favorite ones was John Wick Three. I, uh, that was just a really fun project. As as I get a little bit older, I n I find myself being less entranced about the project and more interested in jobs where the production designers that I really respect that I want to work with or the directors that I want to be near. Nice. And yeah. so that's that's really my focus. Certain jo in certain jobs like John Wick was just a super fun project for me just because I worked so closely with the uh, cinematographer and the director versus other jobs where you kind of are in your own kind of concept world, you know. So it's there's some of them have really been really fun. I really enjoyed Underwater also. That was one of my uh, favorite projects that I worked on. Um, just because you got to design like the world bu building for that one was really cool. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, some of the ones that I've worked on that haven't come out yet are um, the Carnage movie is coming out pretty soon, which I had Ooh, some pretty cool Venom stuff. Two, the Electric yeah. Boogaloo, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. nice. <laughs> uh, and uh, a lot of series. I've been enjoying doing series work also now. So. You did you did the you did the 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 Snowpiercer train right? I did. I designed the, the Snowpiercer yeah, train. Awesome. That was cool. That was really fun. I uh, haven't done a lot of vehicle design, so that was really fun to kind of figure out the look for that thing and the mechanics. And you did um, you did, you worked in uh, Oblivion too, right? The yep, movie worked Oblivion. on Oblivion. Did a yeah. lot of that was a matte painting job, but that was a that was just a really fun project because I love that movie. Oh yeah, it's, it's the gorgeous design visuals. Work on that. Gorgeous visuals, yeah. Yeah, that spaceship is one of my favorite. The oh, double yeah. ship, I love that thing. So good, so good. Uh, the train job was really funny because I was so excited about it, and there's you know there's thousands of cars, and once you've got your uh, the engine approved. You still got 999 cars <laughs> to design, so yeah. that was that was a little shocking, and it was a pretty long project, but it was oh, a wow. really fun one to be a part of. So yeah, so yeah, that, so you know trains then. I do know trains. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's that's awesome. So I mean, like, what's what's next for you? Like, what you know, is there is there any kind of a field that you want to go into or? You know, the, is directing in Not, in your future? I'm like, very comfortable in this career right now. I really yeah. like what I'm doing. Um, I'm like you said with Unreal. I'm really excited about using Unreal for mm -hmm. projects. Um, for John Wick, uh, I incorporated Unreal into the design work that I was doing. So awesome. uh, there was a glass uh, building structure that was in that f for one of the finale scenes of that film. And when we designed that, uh, we started with a physical model in the place. And then we did concept art for it and everything. And then once the concept art was approved, we actually brought that into Unreal Engine and created a VR set for them to do their stunt planning for that film oh, awesome. in VR. So the stunt guys would go in there and figure out how they were going to do their kind of fight sequences, where they would fall down the stairs, what glass would break. And doing this kind of like set design stuff that incorporates VR is super exciting to me. Uh, just because you can spatially and walk around these designs that you've got, and that's something that's really that I'm kind of looking forward to doing for the next uh, few films that I'm going to be on. That's awesome. That's yeah. that's super fun. I mean, we, before before we came in here and we recorded the podcast, we were talking about spaceships and mm -hmm. designing them, and then you know, 
going on a tour of something you just sculpted out. Absolutely. And like spaceships, are j- like in general, like imagine as you're designing a spaceship cockpit, now you can put a VR headset on and sit in the seat and see if the steering wheel is in the correct spot. Yeah. Put your hands there and then make sure that the door has enough room to sit on. Like when I was designing uh, the escape pods in the movie Underwater, we actually put a soapbox on the ground and then we brought that little uh, escape pod vehicle into VR and you're sitting on the soapbox, but you're sitting in the escape pod and you're looking to see if you can get in and out of that door and if the like the TV monitors in there are they're in the right placement. If you can see them clearly. Like or spatially, yeah. Exploring your designs is something that is, I think, a really exciting thing for that's going forward. Yeah. yeah it, I mean, aside from the LED wall stuff, too. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it's all pretty fascinating where it's going and everything like that. And, you know, the Oculus stuff keeps getting better and better. Yeah. The screens are getting better. Um, a lot of people are dabbling into that. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I, you know, it, I'll and be honest with you. are designing in there also now. They're oh, yeah. sculpting. It's, it's really And sketching crazy. and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I will be honest with you. In the very beginning of it, I was very, very skeptical. Yeah. Because I was like... Who's going to be able to sit, you know, like not every director or not every art director is going to have an Oculus. So like, you know, like what's what's the goal here? What's the yeah. point? Right. And and now it's like, yeah, no, all the big dogs got the right equipment. It, and, and it depends on the production designer and the director on if they're OK with it. I, yeah, I, yeah. Pr- that, and that's why I like the John Wake job. So that job, that director and production designer are just so into it and they want VR in their designs. And Favreau's other using one, the hell out of it. Yeah, and yeah. Favreau also. And then other ones, you bring the VR headset and you, you want to try this and they're like, no, no, get they're that like, away no, from no, no, me. No. Yeah. And so it's, I mean, you just kind of, you navigate through what, people want to do that and what don't and it's it's pretty i think it's exciting because at least at the very least it's something new to kind of play around with yeah you know, it's a cool toy so like <laughs> w- uh why don't you give like a shout out to certain production design like who's your favorite production designer to work uh, with I, my favorite production designer i would say uh, maybe it's kevin cavanaugh which was yeah. the john wick one or um sean haworth which is uh the one i'm currently on right now so so, so they're all your favorites yeah. there's no there's no uh there's n- there's no specific one. I'm just kidding. No, no. They, Put, I, putting I, you on I love the everyone that I'm working with usually. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. So, like, uh, I guess what what are some of the like what what are some of the passions that 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 you like get you know when you see a project in front of you, mm-hmm. you know, besides working with you know th- the people that you want to work with, is there anything? At this point, with all the you know all the projects that you've worked on, mm-hmm. is there a holy grail out there that you want to work on, or are you like are you are you more excited to work on franchises that are already existing that you grew up with, or have you reached a point where you're like the really unique ones that have never been done before are the ones where you're having the most fun? I want to do ideally in my career is original IP, so I don't want to be working on these franchises. Really, I enjoy them a lot, but mm-hmm. I want to work on original things mostly. Right. Most com- concept artists would say that. Yeah. Uh, but also, um, yeah, I think I think just original stuff. And I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for designing for period pieces m- mm. more than the the. I love the the superheroes and the science fiction stuff, but I really want to be doing something that's like a period piece. And I really love all the work that they did on. Um, not the Harry Potter. What is this uh, the series that's based on Harry Potter? Fantastic um, Beast, Beast. The Fantastic uh, Beast. Ser- that yeah, that yeah. series. I love the look of that kind of old London kind of style. Yeah, stuff, I really so liked it. Yeah. I'm into that kind of period kind of stuff more than I am the the kind of techie kind of stuff. But, yeah. yeah. But I love it all. You love it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. Well, um, so like, is there anything else that you would like, like say you're, you know, you had an opportunity to, kind of you know put some knowledge out there like what what's something that you you've learned in your vast wisdom (laughs) of of doing things in this entertainment industry um that you would like to to discuss or or pass on to the younger generation that might be listening right now uh for the younger generation i would say um like i said with the foundations you should actually paint and you should get color pencils and get sketchbooks even if you're not um not really 2d inclined i think those kind of things about studying color and studying art and design are the most important things that you can do in this career because it, ap- it applies all the way down, like every single part of my career. I could think back to the things that I learned in art school in painting classes and stuff like that. So I think that's really the most important thing to take away or to keep with you as you're going through everything. 
No, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. And and the generic answer is travel too. I think is really important to travel. You, but yeah. you know, everybody everybody seriously miss you know misses out on that part. Yeah. You know, I I was I was one of those people that never thought I was going to travel anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, like I never thought I was going to leave the U.S. It's not that I didn't want to. I just never thought that I'd have the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, it's right? hard to get the out first there. place I was lucky enough to go w- was Portugal. Mm-hmm for um trojan horse was a unicorn sure, yeah. right and that was also my first speaking engagement mm-hmm. so like being able to go to portugal and then travel and then you know i met so many great people there it's the pe- it's all those outside influences in the world that you go out and if you just you know go out there and soak up what you're getting that applies to the work that you're doing all the time oh right? yeah it's if you stay just focused on maybe just certain things you're there's so much out there to just kind of you know, take like take in and apply to your creative process. So, yeah, yeah, so totally. A, almost every artist that I've that I've ever talked to has always mentioned that in some form or another is yeah. get out there, see the world, change your aspects. You know, preload that vi- you know that that cortex of yeah, the memory bank, the memory bank of <laughs> of new things and new art styles mm-hmm. and really getting out there and seeing stuff. I mean. And be bored, too. It's yeah. so funny. Nowadays, with all the technology that we have, with our phones and everything, we are consuming content at a level that it doesn't allow us to have the, those hours of boredom where you're actually letting your mind just kind of think about what's creative. You're, there's so much information going in and not enough, not, enough, not enough time to just kind of focus on it and take it all in, I think. There's not enough area of area of rest in your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you put it in design terms, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at your phone or your screen time, it's terrible, right? Oh <laughs> God! The other day, what is it? I'm really trying to to not, but it's like it's like four hours a day. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. We're we're constantly on, just flicking through things. Yeah, just doom scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. But yeah, well. Well, you know what? I think I think we're gonna end it there. I think that was great. Thanks for coming in, man. Absolutely. You can come in anytime you me. want. Um. Uh yeah man and you know I look forward to you know playing some D and D again that'd yep, be some good yep. times good times <laughs> um well yeah you know what uh that's it for this episode thanks again for coming in Alex nice check out his art station all of it and follow him on every form of social media even all though we were them. just saying don't don't yeah, get on get on your media. phones immediately but, but also follow him as much as possible no, I'm just kidding yeah thank you yeah. all right man well, thanks a lot guys.